Governor, Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced the appointment of Vaughn Schofield. Schofield's background is in business, arts, education, and broadcasting. Among other things, she is an honorary colonel for the 38th Service Battalion. Now, Schofield was not the only notable Saskatchewanian in Ottawa today. Premier Brad Wall was here too, en route between Ireland and Regina. I spoke to him earlier today about that trip, the federal budget, and the NHL. Well, Premier Wall, thanks so much for joining me. We've just come from an exciting period, <laughs> question period. You got to watch that. And there were some questions coming up about the budget and how it is going to affect provincial finances. Sure. And I know this is something uh, you and all Premiers have talked about, and, and I know yep. Minister Flaherty's talked about with your finance mm -hmm. minister. Uh, what are you looking for from the federal budget in order to make sure your province can do what it needs to do? Well, they made a promise around the health transfer that it would grow by 6% a year up to 2015-16. We need them to keep the promise. Uh, there's another formula that takes effect after that, and that's been the subject of some debate, um, but uh, you know we fully expect them to keep the commitment for a 6% increase in health care. That's what we've budgeted into our own budget. We're actually going to bring some austerity measures to bear in our province because we know that the economic growth we're seeing is underpinned, is strengthened by fiscal probity. So we actually want to introduce uh, the fiscal discipline uh, uh, even at a high point in the economic cycle. We know that all governments, including the federal government, are looking for ways to save as well. Now, we've heard uh, some pre-budget messaging from Minister Flaherty. He's saying it's not going to be an austerity budget, not going to be slash and burn budget. Uh, and I guess the trick is, uh, with any budget, yours or the federal government's, is to find the balance between what the government's fiscal situation is, but also recognizing that I assume across the country it's still a precarious uh, economic position. Well, uh, you know, in our province we have, we, we see some significant economic strength still. We see it forecasted over for the next while. But we know that, uh, you know, foundational to the long-term economic success of Saskatchewan is balanced budgets, paying off the debt so we can keep taxes low so that we do have resources to invest in infrastructure. So we're going to bring down a budget that is, uh, I think, would, would uh, be considered to be austere uh, in on, on the 20. 1st of March, uh, because we think it's important to, to keep the, the fiscal health of the province such that we can make the key investments in infrastructure, uh, that we can continue to pay down debt and keep taxes competitive. And I, you know, I, I, I think other governments are looking at the same thing as you see, uh, as you see uh, sort of the results of uh, some of the discussion even in Ontario with the Drummond Report and what the federal government's going to be doing uh, with our budget. Now, at the last time we talked, one of the issues you highlighted for Saskatchewan's uh, future, economic future, is finding skilled laborers, finding enough people to go to work uh, wherever in Saskatchewan. I understand you just come back from this recruitment trip in Iceland. Right. Tell us about that and uh, what the objectives were and, and how it went. Right, we just uh, got back uh, yesterday uh, for some meetings in Ottawa before we head back to, to Regina, to Saskatchewan. And, Really mixed feelings about uh, Ireland. The two days of a job fair there, and the lineup was almost a kilometer long, sometimes longer. People being turned away from coming to this job fair, where Canada was represented by the West. See, I think we were the largest uh, uh, presence in terms of Western uh, Canadian businesses that had jobs to offer. Australia was there, uh, you know, and and so mixed feelings because obviously that's that's tragic, uh, and there's a lot of dislocation. Uh, there for people who are out of jobs and some for a long time. On the other hand, we're providing some hope uh, and uh, there are a highly skilled uh, labor force that's there uh, and uh, I think our employers had a, had a good two days. There were job offers being made on the spot mm -hmm. and uh, and we want to welcome uh, Welcome all of them to Saskatchewan, where green is the color, as you know already, so they could feel at home from that perspective. Sorry, I said Iceland. Of course, I meant Ireland. Ireland uh, yeah. One of the things, I guess, that, that is odd about this situation, that a provincial government isn't perhaps seeking help from other provinces or seeking to find labor, oh, fill are. labor. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you are, but I'm just, is there some things that the federal government or other governments can do to say, how do we help Saskatchewan sure. and other provinces out with their, their labor issues? Well, well, ours is a three-pronged approach in terms of the labor shortage. Number one, we want to more fully engage First Nations and Métis, the Aboriginal population in the province, and we're, we've been investing in training and seeing some progress there. In addition to that, we want to recruit expatriates from across the country and other Canadians to Saskatchewan. And then finally, we want to go abroad. It's all three. It's not either or. In the case of other Canadians, you know, we've said to the federal government and others, our partners in Confederation, that employment insurance, uh, we need to look at employment insurance, which has some, uh, there's some bias against mobility in employment insurance, the way it is with the 58 different regions. And, you know, there's, that's caused some debate, certainly, about our, our position. but. 
uh, that would certainly help us recruit in Canada before, uh, for those to, in terms of those who are unemployed here before we go abroad. Uh, now, you, you mentioned uh, Aboriginal and Métis people, and of course your province has a huge percentage of Aboriginal and Métis uh, uh, citizens. One of the things that uh, the Prime Minister and uh, AFN leaders came out of their, their big summit was a focus on education, right. and we're going to see again this federal budget. Do you have some suggestions for uh, federal governments, for, for Native leaders about what they can do to improve educational opportunities for Aboriginal people. We do. We have a focus on education ourselves uh, and a memorandum of understanding with our Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations that seeks to reduce the gap in terms of uh, graduation rates and achievements between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal students. We're seeing some uh, some uh, progress, by the way, because we're also investing in specific uh, First Nations Aboriginal uh, uh, post-secondary institutions, tech schools, one in particular, and in the, la in, in the last year, January to January, we saw an increase in Aboriginal employment of 6,200 in the province, which is a significant mm -hmm. number. We see progress being made. We'd like to see the federal government, in terms of on-reserve education, match the per, cap per student per uh, per student uh, funding that we uh, we provide off of reserve, of course, for for everyone else. Some Aboriginal as well as they live off reserve. That's a start. We got to get the funding levels right. We have to have one. You know, we have to have fewer education systems amongst the First Nations. It's 73 or so in 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 our province, and each has a different system, and that's not right either. So there's a job for everyone to do in this. There's accountability for all, for the First Nations, for the province, and yes, for the federal government to do a much better job in this file. Uh, last fun question. We hear a lot of buzz about the NHL may be coming to Saskatchewan. Do you know anything about this? Is your government playing any particular role in creating the rumors or helping to bring the NHL to uh, the flattest province in the country? No, uh, I can say this, that there is some talk about it. I think there's uh, certain proponents, perhaps. It's pretty hypothetical at this point. We've been asked, well, if they do it, will you will you provide funding for uh, the rank improvements? And sure. we've said, look, when the World Juniors came to Saskatchewan a couple years ago, and they were very successful, we invested together with the city of Saskatoon in the rank, put some new seats in. We have a track record in our province province of investing in those kinds of infrastructure projects and were we ever presented with a proposal we would uh, we would look at it but it's all fairly uh it's fairly uh, very early in the process. <laughs> All right, but well, it's got a lot of talk going, as you can imagine. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. Premier, Premier Bradwell, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, David.